Do you know what one of the hardest things to deal with on a daily basis is? Is making the right decision. And I thought to myself, well, I'm a good person, right? I'm, a, I'm going out and looking out for people. I'm, I'm looking to expand and grow. And I'm ambitious, I'm excited, I'm fired up. I'm doing right, right? Well, how do you know? Well, according to King Solomon, he's got some guidelines. Some of you might call it mean tweets. <laughs> But let's discuss in this episode 10 of Wealth and Wisdom on the Seven Fear Squad starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor. Now I'm getting bigger. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And I'm fired up. We are so close to 150,000 subs. So if you feel that we've provided value, somehow, some way, we've added value to your life, please consider just liking this video. And if you haven't done so already, if you watched many of these series and you're back again, please consider subscribing. So please hit subscribe below. All right, let's get into it. How do you decide between right and wrong? You know, lots of times people make decisions based on how they were raised, what the pastor said on Sunday, what their coaches and mentors said throughout the week, the friends and family they do business with on a daily basis, what their friends have said in the past about these certain scenarios. But how do you know? Well, according to King Solomon, who's regarded as the wisest and wealthiest king who ever lived, he's got some guidelines. Now, we've been unpacking every proverb for the last nine weeks, one proverb a week, and we've been seeing how King Solomon decides on righteous decisions versus foolish decisions, decisions that are blessed or decisions that are cursed. So it's all about words. King Solomon said, listen, assuming that you are taking the instruction that you're heeding God and you say, you know what? I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be a faith-based millionaire. I'm going to be a, a warrior, an entrepreneur for God. I'm going to spread God's word. I'm going to be able to use my business, my finances, my resources, my time, my talents to honor God. Well, if that's you, King Solomon says, well, listen, you got to be careful of your words. So let's take a look at some of these things. I wrote down five things on how words leads to influence and how certain actions lead to results. Let's take a look at the first one. Speak with justice and blessing. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 6. It reads like this. Blessings crown the head of the righteous, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. How do you take that? So if you speak words out of your mouth that are blessings versus what he says here, violence. Well, one is going to be blessed with their words. One is going to attract blessings. One is going to speak blessings. You get blessings. But if you speak violence, you get violence. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Let's take a look at number two. Well, if you also speak hope, in life into others, what benefit is it to you to speak life and hope into other people? Proverbs chapter 10, verse 11, it reads like this. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. I find myself very careful of some of the jokes I tell the people, because sometimes some of the jokes, even growing up, even with my time in the Marine Corps, were razzing people, giving people a hard time, but I'm also very careful to make sure I don't hurt people's feelings that I don't get on people's wrong side. Because sometimes people remember that for a long term. They, they may see you're, you're right, you're good with me, Matt. You're good with me, Matt. But deep down inside when they go home or late, late, late at night where they're under alone time, they really despise me for the jokes and some of the things I may have told them. But the opposite is true. If I've spoken life and hope into them in their deepest, darkest moments, they're going to be think of the words I said. And that will lead to righteousness and blessings into other people. In return, it comes back to you. What about speaking wisdom? And the scripture says, King Solomon says, it saves others. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 13 through 14. It reads like this. Wisdom is found on the lips of the discerning, but a rod is for the back of one who has no sense. The wise store up knowledge, but the mouth of the fool invites ruin. How many times have you said something? You're like, oh, dog, that was a stupid thing to say. That was a foolish thing to say. Well, guess what's going to come back your way then? So it's one thing to have a witty thing to say, to have a quick comeback. But man, is it righteous? Is it filled with blessings? Is it filled with wisdom? Let's look at number four. Know when to speak. It's not necessarily what to say, but when to say it. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19. It reads like this. Sin is not ended by multiplying words, but the prudent hold their tongues. You want to know a funny secret of mine? I can tell when somebody's BSing me. I can tell when somebody's being untruthful to me. I can tell, even myself, if I'm being honest with myself to answer a question I've even asked myself, I can tell if I'm honest about the situation or I'm receiving honesty about a situation based on how many words people try to use. 
So if people can't get straight to the point, people are trying to compound words, is what scripture says here, trying to multiply words to try to cover up the truth, to cover up the real answer. I know there then that is a red flag to me. Because it's one thing to speak, but it's even wiser sometimes not to say anything at all. Sometimes people get razzed with trolls and doubters and naysayers in the comment section of the videos and TikToks and IG. Sometimes it's wise just not to have to say anything. So if this is an area you want to improve, which I had to improve into as well, please put it in the comment section below this affirmation. I know when to speak and when to be silent. I know when to speak and when to be silent. Put it in the comment section below. Last but not least, speak truth, speak righteousness, encourage others. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 31 through 32. It reads like this. From the mouth of the righteous comes the fruit of wisdom, but a perverse tongue will be silenced. The lips of the righteous knows what finds favor, but the mouth of the wicked only finds what is perverse. How many times have you been around people and they're always saying something out of fear or anxiety, of depression, of blame, of entitlement, and it just annoys you. Well, guess what? The power of the tongue is so powerful because once it goes out, not only do other people hear it, you hear it yourself. And how you hear things yourself and how you program your mind is also the results you're about to take in your life too, which we'll get here in a second. Because when you talk about things will lead to influence, positive influence or negative influence. Well, how you take action it leads to positive results or negative results. Let's take a look here. At number one here, lazy versus the diligent. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 4, it reads like this. Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. See, oftentimes people get inundated with so many offerings to say, hey, sit at home, watch them, click here, click there, you become a millionaire. And you have to ask yourself, does the, not the actual job that it takes, but the actual work that it takes. It doesn't mean that you always have to be working with your hands. It doesn't mean that you have to always be on your feet. But is it causing you just to be lazy? You know, I was uh, having a conversation with somebody who's a big fan of the book by Tim Ferriss called The Four Hour Work Week, and thinking that he's going to be a, become a multimillionaire by just by working four hours a week. I said, what are you doing with the other 36 hours at a typical work week? What are you doing with the other, I don't know, 50 hours a week that you are Resting and relaxing and doing nothing if you're working four hours. He says, nah, I'm just chilling, just relaxing. Well, guess what? Throughout this pandemic, his fortune has been down to zero. He's not happy. He's battling depression. Why? Because he chose to be lazy. Instead of improving and growing the other 36 hours, instead of improving and growing the other 40, 50 hours, instead of finding other opportunities, it's one thing to say, you know what, I'm cool with working four or five hours, but what are you doing the other time that God has blessed you with? Are you looking to improve or looking more and more just to do nothing? Well, one will lead to certain negative results or positive results you choose. So if you want to get better in this area, put it in the comment section of this affirmation. I am seeking and applying diligence in my life. I am seeking and applying diligence in my life. Put it in the comment section below. Number two, wise words and wise actions versus just chatter. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 8, it reads like this. The wise in heart accepts commands, but a chattering fool, a blubbering fool comes to ruin. Here it goes again. If I, if I hear something and I hear God speaking to me, I see a opportunity open. I see certain things that are happening. Like, okay, is God talking to me in this situation? Is God closing the door and opening up another? Okay, let me consider. Let me be prayerful in my actions so therefore I can be prayerful and godly and righteous in my results. Or am I just ba 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 too much chatter. Sometimes people are too hyperactive, right? Instead of taking moves and being smart with your moves, those quick, fast, hasty moves actually lead to more negative results than positive. Integrity versus cheaters. Cheaters never win, do they? There's a bunch of cheaters that win. What are you talking about? Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. It reads like this. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. You know, I've often said, one of my favorite shows to watch on Netflix was Narcos. How many guys have ever watched that show, Narcos, okay? Listen, I don't have zero aspirations to be a drug dealer. But man, I respect the guy for his hustle. I respect the guy for the way he recruited. I respect the way he expanded his enterprise. I respect the way the guy made pivots and adjustments to his business model. I respect the fact that at one point, he had enough financial resources, albeit 
being illegal, he had enough financial resources to pay off the debt of the entire country of Colombia. But that all came to ruin. That all became because something was negative, it was illegal, it hurt people, it wasn't righteous, it destroyed God's creation. But in the meantime, he cheated the system. For a period of time, he was successful. For a period of time, he had everything, and he was on top of his world. He was on top of countries. He was actually voted into Congress. But eventually what happened? He got found out. He was a fraud. He had to go into prison. He was a cheater instead of operating in integrity. And the thing is, if he did things the right way, without a shadow of a doubt, he'd be a Fortune 50 CEO leader. He would be a faith-based millionaire to the highest degree with massive amounts of influence by doing work that he doesn't have to look over his back and look over his shoulder. But sadly, that's the type of world that you are in when you are doing something illegal, doing in the situation, in his situation, doing drugs, dealing drugs. Number four, find schemes versus finding and seeking wisdom. Let's look at what Proverbs chapter 23 has to say about this. A fool finds pleasure in wicked schemes, but a person of understanding delights in wisdom. See, how many people right now are getting inundated with get rich quick schemes? Put your money here, put your money here, boom, 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 become a millionaire. I see it all the time. Instagram and social media and TikTok, all that stuff. Propaganda, if lack of a better term. So many things there to confuse you. But the wise person says, you know what? If I follow this path, what will it lead to? Okay, who's been down this path? You have? Okay, so if you've been down this path, what does it lead to? Oh, interesting. Thank you for sharing your experience. Why? Because you decided to seek wisdom. Wisdom being that, okay, it's one thing to know things, but it's one thing to know things and actually experience things when you took certain moves and had certain paths that you followed that other people had success with or not success with. That is what King Solomon is trying to get you to follow. Wisdom. Number five, are you uh, gathering or are you sleeping? When it's time to work, are you doing something about it? Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5, it reads like this. He who gathers crops in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. So when it's time to work, are you sleeping in? And listen, I get a day off. I get that you worked six, seven days a week. I get that you worked the last 30 days and you want to sleep, no problem. I'm talking about the chronic person that when it's sunny outside, when the harvest is time for it to gather, you're now here to close deals, you're here to shake hands and open up new doors. It's time to advance your business forward, to advance your finances forward, take advantage of certain opportunities. Are you just kicking back on the beach, on the lake, maxing, relaxing, all that stuff? You guys know what I'm talking about. Or are you out there getting work? Are you being diligent in your efforts? Because King Solomon says, listen, blessed is the one who's gathering and cursed is the one that's sleeping. Which one will you be if your desire is to become a first generation faith-based cash flow millionaire? So here are my big takeaways, my big lessons here from Proverbs chapter 10. Number one, getting something for nothing is foolish and short-lived. Yeah, you may get rich quick now, but it's going to be a short-lived opportunity. Or would you rather find the path of wisdom saying, listen, let me build something for the long term. Let me build something for generational wealth purposes. Let me just not get rich quick now. By the way, there are wise ways you can get wealthy today, get rich today, but have it long lasting if you are following the path of wisdom. Second lesson learned, God doesn't like spoiled children. Hey, he's giving you blessings. He's giving you talent. He's giving you safety. He's giving you refuge. He's giving you peace. What are you doing about it? Are you just being selfish and taking advantage of it for yourself? Me, 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 me. Or are you using those financial resources? Are you using those blessings to be a blessing upon other people? Let's take a look at what Proverbs chapter, 17, chapter 10, verse 17 says about that. Whoever heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. Last but not least, long life and more opportunities come to those who fear God and embrace wisdom. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27 reads like this. The fear of the Lord adds length to life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. So that being said, what type of life do you want to live? You want to live a life of cutting corners and get rich quick. And I hope I get away with something that's illegal or hopefully I get some way that I got well fast. No problem. We'll see what happens. Because right now where our economy is facing is a potential time of correction. We got a war going on. We got the U.S. economy here in, in the fritz. We got people here that are living high types of inflation. We're going to see right now which of God's people are 
following wisdom are seeking wisdom are doubling down in this very moment because when the you know what hits the fan we're all going to see whose wealth either increases during this time or who decreases during this time based on the paths that they follow and i hope and pray my friends who are watching this that you follow and embrace the path of righteousness that you embrace wisdom just had King Solomon did, taking his people through a golden age. So before I let you go, a couple of videos, I want you to check out three biblical habits that made me a millionaire. Please check out this video right here. And the other episodes we had here of the Wealth and Wisdom series, please click right here. With that being said, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys.